All right, good evening, everybody. I hereby call the June 5th, 2023 meeting to order at 6.31 p.m. Uh, first order of business will be to approve the minutes from May 22nd. I motion we approve the minutes from May 22nd. Second. I've heard a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes from May 22nd, 2023. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three zero, Jeff. Okay. All right, our first order of business today is a one day liquor license for June 11th, 2023. Yep, yeah, so the, um, we got a one day liquor license um, application with all the information, uh, no concerns from fire, police, um, building, or the health department. Um, the applicant is on, and I believe it's a graduation party, is that right? Yes, it's a, actually a graduation slash first birthday party. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not a very rowdy crowd. So. And you said that all the, the all the chiefs signed off on it and everything? Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Does anyone have any questions? I don't. Okay. Well, that. Wonderful. All right. I will entertain a motion to approve the one-day liquor license. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Aye, three zero. Thank you very much, enjoy your party. You're all set, Molly. You can swing by and pick up the certificate uh, anytime. <laughs> okay, thanks so much. Thanks. Alrighty. Moving on. Next up, we have the Pathways Committee update. Okay, so um, it's actually kind of a final report. Um, the Pathways Committee um, is in consensus that we're uh, ready to sunset ourselves. Um, we've been in existence for 10 years and have accomplished a tremendous amount in those 10 years. Um, all of the new sidewalks and uh, the new park and um, other stuff all came from our initiatives. Um, Dan was with us from the beginning, so he's very familiar with what we accomplished. Um, and um, uh, we've kind of aged out a bit. Um, some, well, some of us, most of us. <laughs> Nancy's still going strong. I'm, I'm pretty spent. I'm, <laughs> I'm quite spent. Um, and um, But we also feel like uh, it's time for an organizational change. Um, that now the town of Sunderland has two parks, um, and the the um, this park is being very well used, um, and um, you know the library is involved and running kayaks, and now we're getting pickleball courts, and it's a real park. Um, and we feel that we were kind of. The Pathways Crane was a real dream team, and we had like a, a lot of, it was just a real synergistic committee, and we were able to accomplish a lot, and we were sort of like the de facto recreation commission, but I, I think there should actually be a parks and rec uh, group now, if it's appropriate um, that uh, recreation be thought of in the very broad sense, and that you know, the parks be overseen and, and co coordinate all the different um, 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 people involved are coordinated and it, it, that's, um, it, does that make sense? It could also be yeah. a TV show. So, um, so that's our first recommendation. Um, and so, as like a, I, I know like a lot of final reports just get put in a drawer, but I, I, we just wanted to share some recommendations as we, as we kind of close out. Um, so first is to have a proper parks and rec um, commission for the town. Um, and second is to continue to build maintenance funds for the town because we were able to attract a lot of funding um, for um, developing the parks, but you can't, it, it's 
it's on the town to maintain them. We can't, CPA funds won't pay for maintenance. Uh, the, you know, state park grants won't pay for maintenance. And it was, when we were applying for the grants, we made a commitment that we were gonna maintain them. And that, like over time, the, those funds are gonna need to be kind of built up. Um, so just want to kind of remind you all about that. Um, and then um, we'd like to ask to, or hope that the town will, on that note, maintain the um, Riverside Park. Um, and I, right now we have a, a volunteer, or a few volunteers working on the river walk, but I think it would be really great if um, you might be able to appoint someone who could kind of coordinate the maintenance. Uh, it, it's actually really fun to get parties of people together and work on it. Um, it's a really good social, for our social fabric, and it's, you know, many hands make life work. Um, and, uh, but it takes somebody to coordinate that, and I think like it would be a really good job for tax abatement or something like that. Um, so, um, and also we still have a partnership with U.S. Fish and Wildlife. We had a 10-year partnership with them, and I don't know if we're like in maybe year eight of that. And they made a commitment to help us um, get rid of the invasives down there, but they need to be nudged. Um, and uh, uh, we have a, a contact at U.S. Fish and Wildlife is a resident of Sunderland, wonderful guy, Dave Sagan. But he's a busy guy. He is responsible for the Connecticut River watershed in four states. But we just happen to have him here in Sunderland, his office and his home. So he's, he's very, and he launches his boat here at our launch. So he's a, he's a fan of, of Sunderland Riverside Park, but he needs to be kind of nudged to, mm -hmm. to deal with the, um, not we, the not we. And um, <laughs> in particular, there needs to be, because of the, the wetlands, there needs to be a permit. Um, and I think like he's gonna have to come to ConCom meeting and go through the whole permitting process. Yeah. So he needs to be nudged. Um, okay, and then I just wanna mention two other things. One is um, the school street sidewalks. Um, they're part of the complete streets plan. Um, and I think they should be a very high priority to finish the school street sidewalks because um, especially now with the senior housing here, I mean, the, the, this, this loop and every, I'm sure you see, Jeff, you see people walking mm -hmm. down here all, all day, right? Um, and that the last piece of the, of this walking loop that's not handicap accessible is the school street sidewalk. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I would just, um, Incur and I and and there's been some design work done on it already. Yeah, it's actually it's been on our radar for at least the last year. Great. Um, probably before that also. And in fact, did we have a conversation with uh, FERCOG when they came in asking us about grant stuff? I think that was one of our top items for having them help us get find grants that are going to help us be able to make that happen. Because I totally agree. Um, especially with the senior housing going across the road, people coming from there, the library right in the middle of that rock is. <laughs> Right. And we also stuff. gave grant money or CPA money to the Village Center Committee to continue mm -hmm. that project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's already been money. Yeah, we give I think fifty thousand. Is the Complete that. Streets program still going on? Yeah. Because that will pay for it. It's on there. It's on the prioritization plan. Yeah. Yep, that should 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 get an application in for that, I believe. It is. I thought it was. Yeah. Okay, I'll look into it. I thought they were looking at MassWorks for that project. Well, that was for Carlos's big vision, the big, the big vision. But not just the sidewalks were on the are on the street street plan. Yeah. Okay, I don't know what else. I think that was the major part of the project, wasn't it? Straightening the sidewalk and changing the parking. Yeah. 
I think he he was reshaping the street a bit and yeah, changing. That the was already and, done with the North Main Street, though. Yeah, no, no, with the with the parking. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember what else, but I know that his lights. Yeah. Yeah, yeah lights. <laughs> it was like a oh, six hundred thousand dollar. I remember the plan coming through. Yeah. Three million dollar plan, I think. Um, Burying the wires. <laughs> that's the dream. The that's dream. expensive one. Yeah, that, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> <A> zip line. <laughs> zip line. Not gonna zip line to the top of Sugar Lake. Okay, and then lastly, our, our, our almost last project that we've done was working on the uh, Mount Toby. And we were, we, just like we kind of connected the town to the river, we wanted to get a better connection between the town and Mount Toby. And um, we, we did a lot of talking with constituents. There are many uh, stakeholders in Mount Toby, um, passionate stakeholders. <laughs> And um, we discovered that this is a much bigger, bigger project than the Community Pathways Committee. Um, because as far as we can tell, the town has no management plan for the, the roads on Mount Toby. There's six miles of roads. Um, and, um, and they're kind of falling apart. Um, the water district does do maintenance on uh, Reservoir Road. They just take it upon themselves. But the town's not doing anything on the other roads. And Are those town-owned roads? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. And um, we, we know why the town, I, I mean, or I can imagine why the town hasn't done anything on, about it, because it's very difficult. It's a, it's a very difficult topic to tackle because um, of all the passionate stakeholders and then there's lots up there that have been in families since the founding of, of Sunderland are still in the same families you know people really love their lots up on Mount Toby and then there's the butters who you know um, there's a there's a lot of um, there's a lot of feelings um, but um, and I asked Jen to come um, too because there's a lot of conservation issues um, with these decaying roads. And um, there's public safety issues. You know, it's like, the, is, can the fire department, for how long are they going to be able to get up on those roads with vehicles? Um, you know, there's, um, there's a water district um, and all their issues. And then there's conservation issues. And so our sense was that the town, we would like, the town to have an explicit, um, be explicit about its intentions for those roads on Mount Toby. Because we couldn't really move forward um, with any trail, you know, wayfinding or connections until um, the town kind of had a policy. Um, so, do you want to say anything? Um, only that we do have these beautiful trail maps, and I printed some out. <laughs> like some? Or, yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good map. <laughs> we did a lot of map work. Yeah. Um, so again, there are there are many possibilities, but we need some real leadership and putting together of heads in order to move forward on improving the trails, putting numbers up on Mount Toby. Everything is very complicated. So um, it would be a very interesting discussion. Um, and it, but it's also like, as I'm sure you know, Mount Toby is an incredible natural resource. It's like regionally significant. Like in all of New England, it's one of the most biodiverse places in all of New England. Yes. It's an amazing spot that really warrants attention and protection. And yes, the plant life is incredibly diverse, like 
44 out of the 46 types of ferns that grow in Massachusetts grow in that type. It was never clear cut. It was, it's been live but never clear cut. And so um, that's why it has preserved a lot of species that um, are not preserved elsewhere. I didn't realize how much of Sunderland it is, too. Exactly. It's a, yeah, huge, it's a, a huge chunk of Sunderland. Well, that's, that's the thing. We were kind of hoping to sort of shift the consciousness because our, our town, the consciousness in town is just roads. You know, you just think of Sunderland as the roads. And you just kind of don't, a lot of people don't even know that mountain right. is there that you can walk on. I think some people on the slide board have never actually. <laughs> <laughs> I've been up there, I've been up there going. <laughs> 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 well, that's because you didn't grow up in town. <laughs> that's you right. You grew up in town, you're yeah, up there you're up a lot. There a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, um, so I, the Pathways Committee is kind of like handing this off to ConCom. Um, um, yeah, but it does seem like the two offshoots or the children of the Pathways Committee should probably be beefing up the Parks and Rec Department or Commission or whatever we're going to have, and then having some sort of official Mount Toby Commission to organize um, some real brainstorming about brainstorming and budgeting about what we really want to happen on that. Because it's been very sort of haphazard, I guess, right? I, mean, I guess what's the, what's the primary goal that you would have? I mean, no, there isn't one. So you mean, mean just to talk about it? To talk okay. about it, okay. yeah, because you know, if, if you improve the roads, you get more problems in a certain way. Mm -hmm. If you let the roads just continue to deteriorate, that also leads to problems. So it just should be, you know, sure. something should be on. So Jeff, in terms of a couple things, um, if we were to decide to start a Mount Toby committee, is that something that the select board can do just by deciding we're going to do it, or is that something that would need town vote or buy in from other committees? You can create a committee at a whole cloth, or uh, there are some committees that are set up by bylaw um, if you want the town's opinion. But I, I think that, yeah, you can certainly do okay. a formal committee. I think. Typically, what we what I would want to do is create a charge, think about membership, draft it, bring it to you, discuss it, and then um, just so it's clear what you know what the committee would be working on, who the members would be made up from, that type of stuff. But yeah, once that's done, you could just um, wave your hands, <laughs> create it, and then appoint people. Um, so, if you guys are both okay with that, I'd like to have you start looking into that if you can. Um, and then the other part of it would be um, maintaining the river walk. Is that, where would the funding for that come from? Would that be part of our operating budget? Would that be something that we create a specific fund for? Would that be something we have to wait till next town hall for? Um, well, it. There was a donation, but is that not enough to? There, there was a donation. Um, yeah, I mean, we could make it part of the operating budget if it's ongoing costs. You know, every five years we could do a capital article for, you know, new stone dust and then having somebody go. We just have to remember to do it every yeah. five years. Um, and who, yeah, there are several ways to Who would that fall under? Would that be under, I under George or would that be under, like, Jim or somebody? Um... Park probably Jim. <laughs> probably Jim at the moment, That's but I would imagine it would be me. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. But it will be over time, you know, because now there's there's construction, and like you know, over time some wood will need to be replaced. Like the, the and we had when we did the first um, park grant, we had a sort of maintenance budget that you know, just like over time it goes up because you know, wood will start to okay. be replaced and things like that. The overlook, yeah, all of it, yeah. yeah. But it's still, it's, a, it's relatively simple, it just has to be. Yeah. Done, yeah. Done. I mean, I've been leaf blowing in the fall. Yeah, she's yeah. been the heroic <laughs> leaf blower. <laughs> just, the edges have to be done and the leaves have to be done. 
The occasional stone dust replacement? Well, um, and, and the invasives. Oh, and the invasives, but that's a bigger project. Yeah. Yeah. So as I see it, there's three big takeaways from today. And correct me if I'm missing anything. One is the establishment of a Parks and Recreation Department of some sort to oversee all this. Two would be a Mount Toby Commission of some sort or committee to be able to, as you said, talk about the future of that and get the stakeholders in the same room. Um, and the third would be a plan for maintaining the park as it is today. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So Jeff, we're, we're going to want to kind of put all of those into our, you know, Start looking into the bucket. And thank you for the, the final report. Oh, thank you. Very nicely put together. Thank you for all your service. Yes. Years of dedication getting all this done. Thousands. thousands <laughs> yes. Thousands, thousands, yeah. Thousands. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. Huge. And my, oh, just mention my, my final little like uh, contribution is if you didn't hear about it, we're, we're launching a Wonderland in Sunderland. <laughs> um, at the town park, uh, a, 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 a new attraction for children of all ages, uh, um, a little um, fairy trail, a uh, fairy village. It's going to be quite something. And it's going to launch on June 17th. June 17th. Yeah. There's going to be a workshop for um, family. Um, at the Town Park Pavilion on June 17th. And then after that, you can visit any time. Very cool. Bring your parents. It's not all ages, right? All, all ages. ages. <laughs> all ages. No, it's going to be quite something. We have a, a, a wonderful toy artisan who moved to town, and she is the real deal, and she's, she's making some really beautiful pieces, and it's, it's going to be... A really nice place to bring visitors, and a nice, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Jeff, you Yeah, I just wanted to say a little anecdote. Um, Friday was the retirement party for the Amherst police chief, and I went, and the assistant town manager who's in charge of like conservation and development pulled me aside. I was like, I need to go to the river walk because. I've heard from several people now that the signs specifically mm -hmm. are incredible. And so he mm -hmm. pulled me aside specifically <laughs> to tell me that, so I wanted to, to pass that along. Well, I thought one of those um, signs <laughs> right there. Are, right here. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Yeah. Uh, and Brett Hale did the design. Yeah, the design was so good. Sunderland resident, but, yeah. but that's very nice to hear. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for yeah. coming out. I just nope. wanted to put in one plug in terms of the roads, even without a master plan, the roads have become rivers, and that's one of the main problems, is that they just flow into the real streams and rivers coming off the mountain, and it can, it can add to more flood problems downhill. Mm. Those are all filling with the sand and gravel from the roads and not having the right flow. And it also is not making it good for wildlife there, too. So I don't know if it... Put in a plug for MVP grants to mm -hmm. help Just thinking that. Um, deal with the increased stormwater flow and rains with climate change and at least do some kind of repair work on the areas that are not really holding their own anymore. They're washing out. So I, I mentioned that to the MVP guy, and he said, if you were to take the roads out, we could do it. <laughs> it's still <laughs> roads. So we can ask again, I would be happy to work with you on trying to get MVP on board, because I think that makes a lot of sense. If you take the roads out? Yeah. So if you restore it to natural habitat, then you don't have to worry we'll about it. We'll fix it up it. and try and get it in the ground. Yeah. It, that was the response, because <laughs> I said the same thing. I was like, well, can we do... Can you decommission town roads? I guess you can. Yeah. yeah. Just have it trails. Trails. Yeah. Uh, Let's see, this is what the committee needs to But I think if we can get the whole town to say, look, this is our priority, uh -huh. then maybe they would um, be more amenable to that idea. And we could look at other grants. I know grants other towns didn't use MVP grants to repair their roads. Okay. But you, they were doing it more traffic probably than mountain roads. I'm just going to add, um, I didn't ask... Carlos to come to this meeting, but um, he 
he did a lot of work on this project. He he knows those uh, roads intimately. Yeah. And yes. Okay. And when whenever the town is ready to really get into the weeds, <laughs> invite Carlos, and he will um, he can tell you a lot about. Um, the culverts are failing also, they, 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 and you know, he, he, he can tell you a lot of technical information about it. Yes, not only that, but there, there is potential in the map that he developed for uh, potentially making more formal walking, biking routes in town. Um, I don't know if that's something that the town would ever be interested in, but you could have marked trails or you know, have maps online that people might just like to know about, you know, the most scenic, the flattest, the most challenging, the most beautiful, you know, there's real potential for identifying those if that ever became a project that somebody wanted to embrace. We kind of uh, gave up, we had initially wanted to make a, a map for um, distribution, and we kind of gave up because we wouldn't be able to put any, a lot of the trails up there are private right, land, right. and we wouldn't be able to do it, but all, but the apps, Gaia and all trails, they have them on there, and they, they just, they function a lot better than anything we would have been able to yeah. do. So. But that's for Mount Toby, they're also, yeah. you know, like, Flatland trails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, there are many people in town who are walking particular routes and cycling particular routes already, and we could, you know, formalize those as a right. A whole town, a whole t town, town trail, trail map. map as a way to encourage people to get outside and to yeah. Get Carlos some marked everything, and he he made all these GIS layers that have all been um, distributed. But he marked all the bicycling trails and the walking trails and. That's good. That's a good, a good map. Yeah, thank you for the map. It's really <laughs> nice to have this. Yeah. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you very much for coming out and giving us your your uh, little spiel here, and also for all the work you've done. The Riverside Park is amazing. The the trails are great. Um, it, it's not an exaggeration to say that. Yeah, boat ramp. The the partnership with. The, the kayaks yeah. and all that has been wonderful. Um, yeah. I know I've heard from people in town and out of town how wonderful it is. Um, I know a couple of people who come down from Greenfield to walk the, tra the trails because it's one of the best places to do it. It's been a really a successful endeavor all around. So thank you for all your work on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great one, everybody. All right. All right. Next up, we have Jess who would like to talk to us about the rural schools bill. Yes. Sorry that we are getting you in now, but. Um, Thank you. Um, I haven't met Dan before. I'm Justin uh, Corwin from hi, the Jessica. School Committee. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm working on some organizing in favor of a bill that Natalie Blay wrote. Joe Comerford has also introduced it to the Senate, so we're very well represented. Um, this bill is based on the Rural Schools Commission report that came out a year ago, I guess. Um, and it is written to address all of the needs that, that came out of that report. Um, and if it passed in its current form, it would be extremely beneficial to Union 38 schools and to Frontier. Um, part of my organizing, so I'm working with Carolyn Shorsness, Deerfield Select Board Chair. I'm working with the Superintendent and School Committee Chair from Mohawk Trail. Um, we've got a team of volunteers from Union 38 School Committees who are helping to do some of the legwork. Um, and I'm here to tell you about this bill and ask the three of you on Select Board if you would help support our organizing to help lobby the Joint Committee on Education to advance this bill. They need to have a hearing um, and report out favorably on it for it to get to go anywhere. Um, it's probably going to be a multi-year project to get that done, but um, there are three things I hope you will help us with. Um, the first one is for all three of you as individuals to sign a sign-on letter for select board school committees and finance committees. Add, add your personal names to it and that doesn't require a meeting. Um, but I hope that your board would also be willing to send your own letter and I can provide you a template and pass a resolution. Um, which would be parallel to a resolution that I hope to bring to the all the Union 38 school committees. And this is what you had mentioned, Jeff, that the Deerfield had asked us about. Deerfield has sent a letter already okay. uh, in support of it. Yep. Okay. 
Excellent. Um, so individual support, board support, and a resolution are the three things you're asking. Yes, and I can just provide you with all the materials to make it easy. Okay. Yeah. Um, go ahead and email that to Jeff. Jeff will submit it to us. Um, and we can, next select board meeting, we can have had a chance to look at the materials and the three of us can discuss whether we're going to do that in, as individuals, as a committee, or somewhere more. Cool. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much for your work on that. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else, Jess? Or? No. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, next up on our agenda is the safe passing road signs. Um, Jeff was telling me a little bit earlier. We want to yeah, sure. So in December, um, the governor signed an act to reduce fatalities, um, which basically requires motor vehicles to give four feet of distance when passing bicyclists. Um, and MassDOT is giving away free signs to communities to help inform motorists of this new law. So I've had conversations with the police chief and highway uh, super, and we thought that the best locations, two signs each on Old Amherst Road, um, 47 North, 47 South, South Silver, and Falls Road. Um, figuring that's where most of the bicyclists in town are located. And do you need a resolution from us to ask for those? Um, I think just a vote and, and, and that you want to participate and ask for signs. Uh, yeah. All right, any discussion on that? No. Okay. I will entertain a motion to participate in the program and ask for signs from the state. I motion we participate in the programs, ask for the signs from the state. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three nothing. Thank you. Wonderful. All right, that is all of our new business for today. Um, we also have some old business. First up is select board updates. Um, just wanted to say we had a wonderful Memorial Day parade and ceremony. Um, beautiful weather, a lot of good turnout. Um, Jim did a wonderful job getting all together. Had a lot of fun. Uh, it was nice to be able to go do that and but if you like normal times and all that. Um, so that was wonderful. Uh, other than that, I don't have anything. Either of you have anything you'd like to? So um, I'd just like to mention that um, longtime resident, um, Jim Balunas passed away last week. Mm -hmm. The end of last week, he was an educator. He was on our fire department. He was quite involved with town, you know, throughout his years here. And I'd like, you know, just everyone to take a moment and remember Jim. Thanks. Do you have anything? No. Okay. Um, and then finally, we have town minister updates. Jeff. Yes, I have a, a few. Um, quick things. Uh, the RFP for accounting for fiscal year 24 is going to be hopefully going out by the end of this week. So that's exciting. Um, and then we're working, we got a request from a state employee who is a Sunderland resident who has a state vehicle that they are not allowed to park at their house if they could park it at the public safety complex. So I'm working with the fire chief and police chief to make sure that we have a policy so that if it's interfering with something, we can get them out and we're not, you know, just doing it for one person. We have a, a we're treating everybody equally. Why are they not allowed to park it at their house? I don't know. <laughs> we have one at the East Hampton City Hall. <laughs> the DOT um, truck there. Yeah, I, I, because I, I see, you know, state troopers, cars, cruisers, and people. So I, I don't know. Well, is it, it an is. oversized vehicle? Do they live? Sure, no, part of the policy is going to be truck, no yeah. larger than a standard SUV. So it's, it's just a, I, th I think it's a sedan even. I don't know. Yeah. Which is odd too, because there's, I mean, a masked up facility like across the river. Yeah, I, well, I just didn't know if it had something to do with like being in an apartment complex, something like that. That prohibits I think it's more them. driven from DOT, but I'm not, I'm not certain why. Yeah. So I just wanted to give you a heads up that that's probably going to be coming next week. Okay. Um, if if that is something that they're going to ask us to vote on, I would I would also like to know 
why it's necessary. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, and if, and if that's something that they say, like, that's private or, you know, whatever, okay, fine, but it just, it'd be worth asking so that we have that information. Well, just so we know, too, is this something, some new policy that is going to make this become more prevalent that, mm -hmm. you know, within a short period of time, we could have 10 people that need to park there. Yeah. Or is it his wife said, no, you can't park that truck in the driveway anymore, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's a different situation. Different situation, Absolutely. probably. Um, all right, two other quick things. Um, one is on Friday, I think it was Friday, uh, the South County EMS director resigned. Um, and so Crystal has been appointed as the select board rep. We also have another appointment. Um, I know that former select board member Tom Fyden Kevitz was interested, and in, just given that. Um, that the things might move quickly and they might have meetings looking to hire somebody. Um, I wanted to suggest that you might want to appoint Tom to fill that position so he can participate. Okay. All right. So you need just a motion on yeah. that. Yeah. I have a motion we um, appoint Tom Fidenkevich as the was it community member, town yeah. member of the South County EMS Board of Oversight. Second. I hear a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? No. Not hearing any discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Three nothing. All right, and then um, another an unanticipated item: um, the request from the highway department to hire a seasonal laborer, um, Mr. Adam Coffin. He worked last year doing seasonal work in Deerfield, um, and basically uh, the highway department has been looking for somebody for a couple of weeks and didn't want to wait another two weeks um, so we have all this information um, so I was hoping if you were okay with it we could um, appoint him as a seasonal laborer all right I will entertain a motion to appoint what was his name again sorry Adam Coffin Adam Coffin as a seasonal laborer and what should do yeah I, 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 so moved second Right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Thank you. And then I, the last thing is, uh, um, unfortunately, we will not have to go to, into executive session. So anybody who's looking at the agenda, um, I just wanted to point that out that we are not going into executive session. Okay. Thank you very much, Jeff. At this time, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion we adjourn. Did you have something to Yeah, do you have any comments? I figured while I was here. <laughs> <laughs> Super interesting right. stuff. I <laughs> motion we adjourn. Right. Do you have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. I'm not hearing any discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three nothing. Take us out at 7.08 p.m. <laughs>